2025. And a part analysis is to go by uh, the, to say about water security and sustainability, those are the kind of things that we're doing at the Columbia University's water center. And uh, if our analysis is anything to go by, and this results from the gray satellite data shows, that it shows that almost one third of India is already under intense water stress. So this uh, is the satellite image of the gray uh, 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 satellite. It showed that the, the largest groundwater mining operation is going on in the world. And it showed this east-west band which depicts existing excessive groundwater extraction, which is taking place in the indo ganganic plains of India. It is actually in the food bowl, food bowl region, which is uh, intensely irrigated, and we have most of the irrigation and food production going on in this region. And uh, uh, it is one of the most heavily populated, about 600 million people in that region itself. And uh, the, what, uh, what was evident from the gray satellite image was that, you know, coupled with various land surface models to remove error and to account for surface storages, it came to the conclusion that uh, this region itself lost groundwater at the rate of about more than 60 kilometers cube in six years time between April 2002 and June 2008. And uh, the kind of work that the water balance analysis results that I will be showing today that we are doing at the water center would show, would show that most of the India, and especially this region, is under acute water stress. So it kind of corroborates this study, uh, this results from the gray satellite. Uh, on the right, the figure on the right is, uh, shows you the population density map of India. And uh, these black dots, it's actually the groundwater graph. And one dot equals 100 uh, cubic meters uh, per hectare of net crop area, which essentially means that this region is heavily populated and intensely irrigated at the same time. So uh, since I'm in New York right now, I wanted to see how many of us live in New York while we are in India. And this is the population density threshold map. Uh, the dark red regions uh, are uh, is, is the population density above, above New York's population density of 200 people per square kilometer. And it goes, you don't want to know the higher end of where we end in India. So this shows that actually most of us, this, this shows the kind of stress the country's water resources is under. It. It's under tremendous pressure. So far the population is, is under a question. So there are actually few drivers which leads to the current state of water, unsustainable water situation that we are in. First of all is the high population. And then the second driver is actually the rainfall variability. Uh, uh, we in India, we get monsoon precipitation. So all of the water that we get is in the few months, four months of monsoon from July to September. And most studies indicate that uh, all of that rain uh, falls, essentially falls in 100, uh, 100 hours. So you can then imagine the kind of pressure it puts on, uh, on water resource planners. If you don't plan for that variability, then you are in trouble within just considering the linear rainfall patterns. This is uh, the third driver that we would be emphasizing upon, and my colleague uh, who's presenting after me would uh, give you the results, would show the results of the spatial optimization of cropping patterns that we are doing. So basically, um, if you look at this percentage of land irrigated, uh, uh, this is the result, uh, model results by Sabre Dital, and the data is at five, five, five by five minutes graded data. And you can see this east-west band, which shows that this region is under intense irrigation, heavily irrigated. And this kind of coincides with what the Grace mass loss region shows. This is one of the, we do a lot of uh, field studies. We're doing a lot of field studies in this region, the indo ganganic plain, which was, which was shown under tremendous water stress. Uh, we found that uh, some of the farmers there, uh, they actually have two pumps side by side to pump groundwater. So this is highly unsustainable. Uh, groundwater uh, in India su suffices 70% of irrigated needs as well as 80% of domestic needs. So that was kind of focus of our study to see how um, first to do water balance studies to show what is the current state of water stress. Uh, one of the maps that James uh, showed uh, uh, predicted that by 2025, most of India would be under water stress. But uh, if you consider, uh, we, uh, we, we basically did studies based on 100 years climate data, and we found that most of the country is. If you those, if you consider the intermittent droughts and floods that have happened during that period, most of the country is already under huge water stress. And I will show you the results in a minute, but I would just like to go through the motivating questions. The second question was that, uh, what is the useful way
way to assess or index risk uh, given the intra as well as the interannual climate variability. So I would show two kinds of results. One is considering within year rainfall pattern and the other one considering intra interannual rainfall patterns. And so uh, based on what Phillips showed about the water harvesting, rooftop rainwater harvesting, uh, we, uh, there's quite a bit of policy initiative and there's quite a few uh, policy choice going on in India right now and there's huge debates going on whether small rain, rooftop rainwater harvesting would suffice or do we need big dams, do we need, uh, do we go on mining groundwater or if I am a farmer and if I, if I save water would that be enough? <coughs> and uh, basically the results, uh, the, the modeling results that we are trying to come up with would try to answer all of these questions one by one. So the first question that we are trying to, that I would show uh, for brevity of time is how much storage capacity is needed based on what kind of deficit pattern we are seeing over the country and uh, what kind of storage would be needed to buffer the intra and intra annual inter -annual variations in supply considering the rainfall patterns and uh, uh, whether we should go for small or large uh, water harvesting or just conservation is enough. And so as I mentioned earlier, uh, agriculture is the biggest culprit in our country and it uses huge amounts of water. So what we are trying to do uh, at the water center is we are trying to go for irrigation by, by saving water in irrigation, <coughs> by doing all technological innovations. We are trying to save water in India through field projects and through the modeling results, we are trying to show that you know if if your region is under already under intense water stress, then it would not be feasible to grow water intensive crops. And this is where virtual water, once again, one thing that James Tinder mentioned would come into consideration. And Naresh would present some results of spatial optimization patterns that we have come up with. And it would and it shows that actually if you go by that policy choice, you know, by by an optimal cropping pattern, you you would be able to uh, decrease the deficit uh, deficit uh, numbers a lot. So basically, we have a very the very simple supply. We have hundred years of data from for rainfall from 1901 to 2004. The demand data to calculate agricultural water demands, uh, I'll just skip ahead a little bit. Uh, we used 50 crops. Uh, at this point of time, we are trying to include more crops as, our, as we go on finalizing our model. And we basically had, uh, we used crop coefficient at each crop growth stage. Just to go back, um, uh, crop growth stage, and we are using the daily temperature and cropping pattern for that particular crop, the crop growth stage, including the current area where it is planted. Uh, for domestic uh, usage, we are considering two, two thresholds, 150 liters per capita per day for the urban population, 75 liters per capita per day for the rural population. Uh, the, if you are from India, you would know that getting data in India is, uh, is a huge struggle in itself. So uh, we have to use the industrial and livestock data from uh, model data. Uh, uh, I have uh, uh, friends at the uh, University of Kassel, Germany, who graciously provided me the 5, uh, uh, 0 0.5 TV, 5.5 TV data for industrial and livestock usage. So the deficit basically is uh, demand minus supply for that particular. So I'll show you the, the small, uh, just as we have states divided into counties here, we have uh, states divided into uh, districts. They are just administrative regions, so we try to do the, the, do the analysis at that level. So to, to explain this potential storage index, I would uh, uh, jump ahead and show you the conceptual, uh, uh, primarily providing a very robust measure for assessing the storage requirements. Uh, if, if the within your rainfall, considering within your rainfall and also inter and intra annual variability in rainfall patterns. So, this is the first set of results that we got, and uh, the, this shows the median deficit in cubic kilometers. As I was saying, these smaller polygons are actually the districts, these are the administrative units in India. And um, here, the dark, the dark red or the reddish regions is the deficit is greater than one cubic kilometer and it shows once again uh, points to the region. This region is arid, semi-arid, grows huge amounts of rice and um, we, uh, we flood the fields when we grow rice in India so that's, that's the biggest problem in growing rice. Uh, it consumes six times more water than the other cereals and pulses and uh, 
one seeds, etc. So we, we, um, it shows that the deficit of indefinitely is very high here. But if you do a cumulative run for 104 years altogether, it shows that this region stands out, which means that you know this one-year cumulative max is significantly higher than within the year analyses. And once again, I would like to uh, go back to the uh, water stress map that James showed. I'm really sorry, I keep going back to that map because those maps, if you do. What we do in India, and all the water resources ministry reports, what they do is they take mean average annual rainfall, they take the supply and as mean average annual rainfall, they take the demands and they just uh, subtract one from the other and that's what they come up with when they're calculating water stress. And this spatially disaggregated method, taking the historic climate records period is, uh, is uh, to our knowledge, is to the best of our knowledge, the most in intensive kind of calculations that we have done for India so far. Uh, because uh, it, this shows that we don't have to wait until 2025 for water stress to happen in India. Water stress is happening over most of India now, and especially when we consider cumulative deficit, uh, the, the results are quite dominant. So this is uh, just to compare uh, uh, different districts. We normalize the deficit pattern in cubic kilometers. We divided it by district area. And this once again shows that this region, the Indo-Nagetic plain. So this region to us came up the, as the most sensitive. And so when we came across Gray Satellite's image, and quite a few, uh, because Gray uh, Satellite, it uses, uh, it is very sensitive to all kinds of storages, groundwater surface storage, and compared with land surface models. I, I've seen quite a few posters here which has used that data sets, and, I would, and I'm not surprised why because it provided anthropogenic uh, impacts that we are having on groundwater resources and it's very hard to model groundwater. And this kind of, it, the, the study that placed it kind of collaborates with what we, are, what we have found for India through our results too. So this is the uh, normalized deficit index. So basically this threshold shows that, you know, uh, sorry, I had something up there, so basically it's not there anymore. So the uh, threshold of 1.1 to 3.4 here means that to meet the deficits in that period, you would, uh, you would need about one to three times average annual rainfall for that year. So that is the storage that is required for that region. So if you look at the same thing, you can see that this, this scale is, is tremendously, it's much larger than this, obviously because it is a cumulative run over 104 years. So the, you can see that this region itself, which is Punjab, which is the food bowl region, this is where the Green Revolution in India started, is actually needs uh, 100, more than 100 years of uh, the rainfall storage to meet the deficit in that, in that region. So uh, I'll just quickly go over, uh, we try to look at in which areas are actually very sensitive based on the cumulative max for 104 years. The red regions correspond to this red line on this figure, the blue regions correspond to the blue line, and the y-axis we have the cumulative deficit. It shows that in blue regions we have deficits which touch zero. So mostly when there is rainfall, you know, the deficits do come down. So within that year, if you are able to take care of that of storage for that particular year, you should be fine. But if you look into the red regions, you would see that every subsequent year the deficit goes on adding up. And so these are the regions which needs the most priority in terms of storage and is the most sensitive in terms of uh, supply and demand requirements. So now the second stage of what we're trying to do also is trying to see where we have appropriate storage to take care of these deficits. And uh, what we have here is the data from Central Board of Irrigation and Power in India. This line, I know you all can't see that from from behind. This line, this dark gray line is the average annual flow, basin-wise average annual flow. And the, and the bars, the green bars, it shows the minuscule percentage of life, life storage capacity for that particular basin. Uh, so this shows that um, we do not have enough storage in India as of now. Neither planned nor under construction, nothing going on. Um, if we compare India's situation to other countries, we would see that while Australia and US has uh, uh, per capita uh, storage, cubic meters per capita storage ranging from 5,000 to 6,000. India is a minuscule less than 200 cubic meters per capita. So this points to the pressing need for investment in developing storage infrastructures. So this is 
just one of the regions where we do, we are, so we are trying to do after this national scale assessment, we are trying to do state level and very fine scale assessment of what might be going on in that particular region. Uh, this is 100 years um, time series for deficit, um, for cumulative deficit in this northwestern arid state of Gujarat, which grows a lot of cotton and groundwork, which is very water intensive. And this is just, this graph shows the time periods between 1960 to somewhere around 1990, and it shows this red region. So when you spatially disaggregate the information, you will see that some regions do stand out and which needs the most priority, economically speaking or financially speaking, if you're a policymaker, that region in that state needs the most attention for whatever reason or whatever might be going on. And uh, the, this red region actually shows that you know this, this deficit is going on increasing and thus you need to account for large storages that if deficit never comes down to zero, it is going on adding. For this blue region, green region, we have this blue map, blue line, which shows that you know within within that period, one drought led, uh, led by another drought, led by another drought, you have this high deficit which blows up. And so to account for storages, we need to consider these drought sequences that happens uh, one after the other. So uh, we finally mapped where the high intensity crop, intensive cropping areas are happening. Kharif is the monsoon season crop, Ravi is the winter season crop, and you kind of once again see the picture, the Indo-Gangetic plain and the Himalayan of those regions is actually under intense cropping pattern, and which happens to be the most populated in India too. And so we ran, ran the model without crop water usage, and we saw that this deficit was no more existent. So whatever deficit pattern was, was, was uh, showed up, it could easily be taken care of by just the rainwater harvesting storage structures or very small storages. And this is not to say that uh, India should, would be good without agriculture, but this is just to show the intensity of water usage that agriculture puts on India's water situation. So just to summarize, uh, the water stress maps, um, as I showed, it matches the groundwater depletion patterns that are shown by the gray satellite. The multi-year drought impact is uh, significantly greater when we ran the 104-year simulation altogether and the district. So uh, too many corporations, you know, the corporate sector is becoming intensely sensitive to water stress because, you know, they are in the competition to, um, the, uh, they don't want uh, to um, cite their organizations where there's actually uh, water stress going on. And so this is a very uh, novel method uh, that to propose to the uh, business businesses because they would be interested in having these kind of information when they're uh, citing their facilities and also for agricultural investments. And so we are trying to show that you know how you can uh, take care of these stress risks by improving irrigation efficiency. We have field projects going on in India and we have saved quite a lot of water and that's a matter of another conference where we can have some more talks going on over here. Please feel free to check our website at the Columbia Water Center, Earth Institute's division at Columbia University. We have quite a few very interesting projects going on there. Uh, Naresh will be talking about the shifts in cropping patterns which takes care of the deficits and future work is going on along, along, uh, along those lines where we are taking the uh, climate uh, the risk into consideration, developing strategies for but now after this analysis we would move into river basin scale uh, because then we would be able to consider the upstream downstream water that, uh, that is shared. A uh, few caveats, we have only considered the total rainfall available without partitioning right now into runoff uh, rain infiltration. So this analysis presents an upper bound on the locally renewable supply. Uh, also anthropogenic modifications to the hydrologic cycle such as groundwater pumping, irrigation water usage, uh, reservoir impoundment as well as the incoming stream flow were not considered. This would, all this would be taken care of when we are doing river basin scale analyses. And uh, unlike, unlike other analyses, we, by considering within year rainfall and also rainfall interannual variability and rainfall, we have considered the climate risks um, and, and the potential impacts of climate change. So that's it now. Any questions?